not happen. It could not happen, yet it did. No one even noticed. In front of neighbors, in front of strangers, and at the king's parade, for God's sakes. The king himself could have seen you. No one saw me. So the story spread itself. It was nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing. Tell me if this is nothing. In broad daylight, on a city street, you are standing out in public, and your underpants fall down! <laughs> I can't believe this happened to me. It didn't happen to you. But they will blame you. They will blame me for having a wife who is so distracted by staring out the window, who is so hypnotized by a canary in a cage, that she can't even tie a tiny knot in two slender cords. I'm sorry, but I am a responsible wage earner. I cannot have my underpants go flopping down because I must bring home six hundred dollar a year so I can put dinner on the table, clothe ourselves, keep the place heated, and rent out a room. The whole event lasted two seconds. Have it to her? Time is relative. I pulled them up. Please, don't be graphic. They were on tight. They fell. What's going to go on? What's going to happen to me? What about my income? Oh, Theo. Louise, everything in my world was running perfectly. But here at home, how can the floor be so dirty? How can the cloth not be wound? How can the dishes be so piled up? And how, I ask you how, can your panties in broad daylight just fall down? You know me. You've known me since I was a little girl. And? You know I like to dream. Dream the dishes done. You used to like my reveries. In a girl, yes. There was nothing lovely. There was nothing lovelier to do with all that free time than to lie around looking as pretty as an orchid. But you're a woman now. Reality is here. It is in this room and the dust on the floor. A fooey. I keep the place nice. Look how deeply affected I am. Yes, you are very sensitive. You know how I hate attention. A little bit of attention, and the next thing you know, I am out of a job. I am a government clerk. I blend in. Do you know why I never buy you a pretty dress, a new hat, or a new coat? Remind me. Because you are much too attractive for a man in my position. Your breasts, your legs, they draw the eyes. My job and your appearance do not go together. Everyone notices you, and it's your fault. My fault? The woman's fault always. Oh, here we go again. What are breasts? Harmless utilitarian lumps of flesh, but you squeeze them into a sweater, and mountains move. I don't know <laughs> You don't have to. Flesh speaks to men. From under coats, from under caftans, from under furs, from igloos. There's always a small voice calling. I am here. <laughs> Men can't be like that. What if I lose my job? Why would you lose your job? I was told His Royal Highness was in the parade. He was. He was passing by in that very moment. <laughs> but that's a good thing. Everyone was looking at him and not me. But suppose he hears of this fiasco. Suppose he hears I am one of his clerks. He discovers my section, my bureau, my name. The king cannot abide scandal. He will have to fire me. And next thing you know, we're out on the street. Poverty, shame, hunger. Oh. oh, from a pair of underpants. Don't underestimate the power of a glimpse of lingerie. I'm exhausted. How would you like your wiener grilled? <laughs> <laughs> Take the knife and slice it from tip to end. Not crossways like you usually do. One wiener sliced from tip to end. My pleasure. And for dessert? Peaches and whipped cream. Do we have some? I could get some from Gertrude. Her true duty. The mouth who lives upstairs! Nosy! Oh well. Huh.
reports of a monster in the Loch Ness. It baffles the scientists, and it bothers me. I do not need these little mysteries. The unexplainable makes me nervous. I have my home, and everything that comes in the door, I understand. I don't have to worry that the faucet will spit fire. I do not have to worry that the bird will attack the dog. The clock will strike six when it is six and not seven. It is like me. It is my kind of clock. Monsters in the lake. All is calm on the surface, but watch out for what's underneath. That's where the danger lies. Under. Under. Under pants! I'm going out to circulate around the town, trying to catch wind of what people are saying, see if I still have an income. Please have dinner ready when I get back. Only when I think how good life has been up until today.
can see the room. That's not necessary. Oh, you would rent a room without seeing it? Yes. Why? <laughs> because. Because. Your underpants! <laughs> this morning at the Grand Bull. Oh my god, who are you? I'm a poet. Unpublished, I'm proud to say, but one who's now found his muse. Oh, please! I will explain. By metaphor? No. By simile? No. I won't beat around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> what an inappropriate illusion. You're not the master of my soul. Well, a few hours ago, I was. Seems I'm engulfed by the rising tide of my own humors. What a beautiful line. Where's my pen? <sighs> Society's office. You see, I believe in miracles. And I finally had one appear to me under a linden tree. There you were, bathed in sunlight with panicked eyes and a quivering body. And there I was, shaken by life. A momentous crossword. In those few seconds when you bent down and collected your underpants, you tore my heart from the things I thought I loved and fixed it <coughs> only on you. Ah. Silence. Good. The silence is devotion. I... I, d I don't know what to say. Then let me speak. From this day on, I will desire you with all the strength of my soul, unwavering, disavowing all others. Please stand up. I cannot stand, for my veins are stiff with surgery. How much is it? Fifteen dollars. I'll take it. The discussion is over. Well, who would believe an elegant gentleman living in this neighborhood? I'll dress as a laborer, a wealthy gentleman hog carrier. And you would live here? In the extra room. What about my husband? If he comes, just introduce us. I'm renting the room. And you are? Versace, Franklin, Angelo, the cat, Luigi, Versace the second. Sorry, the third. You should get up. My husband will be back. Between the sound of his key in the lock and the opening of the door, I will be fleet like Jupiter. Wait, Jupiter is not fleet. <laughs> Make that Mercury. Get up. You'll agree then. Oh, I, I, yeah. In the ellipsis, sounds a yes. <laughs> what about my husband? Think of him as a necessary part of the triangle. Uh, you are the flint, I am the fire, and he is the wet piece of wood. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Hello? Oh, no! 
of a woman lying on a sofa, swathed in a veil. A man stands above her, parting her legs with his foot. He's coming! Oh, I imagine myself as that woman, giving up everything I am to him. He lies between my legs. Stop! He's above me. He looks into my eyes and says... Is the sausage in the oven? Oh my God! <laughs>
smoke. Deep breath. Arms out. Bend backwards. Oh, hold that pose. I'll get the door. How dare you come here? I am to. Go away. I won't. And relax. But your wife uh, gave me her application. Ah, oh, yes, my wife told me that you were interested in the room. However, in the meantime, not knowing of your offer, I received an application from Herr Cohen, with a K, who comes from a good German family, and I read it out. But your wife accepted. It's a deal. And Herr Cohen was just saying he wants to leave. I most certainly did not. So what I was thinking was that we would divide the room. It's almost two rooms already. I'll close it off with some furniture and put up a divider. You can take your pick. Come on, I'll show you the space. I'll tell my husband. I can't stop you, but if you do, I'll tell him the real reason that gentleman is renting a room in this house. You know him? I do know him. How well? Extremely well. He's a friend? No. A relative? No. Then? I've colored his hair twice. Really? He won't remember me, but I know all about him. I saw him this morning when your panties fell down. I was lying on the ground only two steps away. Lying on the ground? Two steps away? That's disgusting. Uh, to me, it was paradise. If I saw what I think I saw, oh please, let it be what I think I saw. <laughs> Here, and just now, when I saw the look on his face, I knew we wanted the same thing. Ever starting at breeze. He'll pay 15 taller for the room, and not only that, he only intends to use it for certain hours of the day. I'll slip in and out. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife, sir, is of able hands and is willing to please a person of your standing. If you insist. Louise, you will make his bed every morning. Yes, dear. Well, now, two new boarders. What could be more perfect? Here are your keys. The facilities are upstairs. Please, no flushing after midnight. It arouses the cats. Oh, I'm in the civil service, so I'm obliged to ask you both if you are planning to work against the government or undertake anything subversive. I am what you see. How could I be otherwise? It makes me proud to know that there are still such honorable men in Germany. <laughs> then we start tonight. Tonight? And the contract will last a year. Deal. Dear lady. Shalom. Oh, no, no. La, 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 la. <laughs> well, two new pain porters. We, my dear, are much better off than we were this morning. Thank God your sluggishness had no consequences. <laughs> I don't like the barber very much. He says he's sick. He'll bring disease into our house. He's not sick. He's sickly. There's a difference. So why would you want him in your home? Twelve taller a month, Louise. Think about it. Oh, <laughs> didn't you just love it when that one turned to you and said, Dear lady, <laughs> to my little Louise, who lost her panties. <laughs> I mean, didn't you just laugh? Dear lady. <laughs> Anecdotes. 
That's the difference between you and I. I face things as they are. You even lie to yourself about your own health. What time do you have to be at work? Not until 10. Then go walking in the morning, get some exercise. I'll get winded. Only at first. Then you have to find out what's wrong with you. Why? So you know where you stand. If I found out what was wrong with me, I just get sick of worrying about it. So of what use is the truth? Good God, man, what good are lies? Everything around us is lies. Are you crazy? Everything around us is lies? Your statement is the only lie in this household. Nonsense. They are everywhere. Where are the lies in this household? With Herr Versace? No doubt. With my wife? Perhaps. And you? Could be. <laughs> so you are not a barber. You are a disguised bear. My wife's lover, who wormed his way in here. I beg your pardon. <laughs> a fellow of unimaginable strength, of glowing health, like a titan standing astride the river of masculinity. <laughs> oh, Louise, you can leave your bourgeois life behind you. And Cohen here is a baron, your lover, and everything around us is a lie. <laughs> Oh, Herr Cohen, <laughs> you are a jester. <laughs> you are going to make things very entertaining around here. <laughs> I'm going out to get some air. It builds the corpuscles. Come with me, Cohen. I think I need to rest. <laughs> like a titan standing astride the river of masculinity. <laughs> Makes it so easy. Makes what easy? It's amazing how trusting he is. Until today, he didn't have a reason not to be. His eyes will be opened one day. By men he took into his house. With excuses a kid could see through. Slip in and out. A personal affair. And you can't wait to sleep with Versace. If you insult me, I'll call my husband back. Oh, look, he's still on the stairs and I'll tell him everything. Why won't you leave? Do you think I could? Watch silently while another man conquers you? I can't allow it. When I saw you in the park today, I wanted you like nothing else in my life. And when I found Versani here, overflowing with lust for you, my jealousy pulled me taut like a crossbow, and I knew I had to stop him. If I can't have you, neither will he. What time is it you have to go to work? You underestimate me, Carl. <clears throat> Moss, you won't sleep with him. You are a child! It's not my fault what I saw. I'm being pulled along by it. You see, Frau Moss, I've been a solitary person, uh, shunned almost all my life. But when I saw you in the park, I had a new companion, my desire, and suddenly I'm not so alone. Hmm. I think I understand. I promise you, I will never transgress any boundary you set for me. And if you need protection from that brute, I would, to my last breath, stand by you. Maybe in time, we could become friends. And Herr Rosati? Oh, please. He's a fox. I have no interest in him. I don't have much experience with women, so I don't know if you're fooling me. He may want me, but you're forgetting my part in all of this. You don't think I can see through that Don Juan to him? I'd be an easy conquest. Do you think I'd give up all this for a meaningless fling? <laughs> but the way he looked at you, oh, I... Oh, he uh, looked at me without permission. I will never look without permission. <laughs> be, I'm demanding, and the slightest thing, a breath, would make me happy. Maybe we will have a future. You're not fooling me. Here, Colin. I need you to go out and get me some coffee. Would you mind? Of course not. Oh, you're such a gentleman. Oh, but you're not dressed for the weather. It's threatening rain. Here, take your scarf. I won't notice the weather because now I'm healthy and strong. Oh, there are umbrellas by the front door. I love the way you say that. Oh, here, you need to eat. Take a roll. You care about me. Oh, how could I not? Let's study Wagner together. You could be Tristan, and I could be a soul. I'll 
See you at supper. Soon. Soon. Some are so fragile that you touch them like a leaf. 
Others are strong, and you draw them into you forcefully. But you, Louise, are beyond category. And when I am with you, I will be in unknown territory, taking in my hands something unfamiliar and new, unlike anyone, ever. I am on fire, Louise, and there is no doubt that I am finally and forever in love. Take me. And those two words are fate. How beautiful when you say them. If I could capture that feeling on paper, I'd be one of the greats. Take me. Take. Take. I must take up my pen. My inspiration is so direct, what I write cannot come out false. Take me. Yes, I will take you and transform you into words. When I am done, you will be as tightly woven as this scarf. I the warp, you the web. And then, and only then, will I demand full payment of your beauty. Oh, my resistance is gone! Imagination is beautiful. 
The imagination rots reality. It didn't hurt Leonardo. Leonardo invented a parachute that doesn't open. Cohen, I stopped by your barbershop today. Your employer had a hard time without you this afternoon. He asked that you be sick on Tuesdays and not Saturdays. It's the worst work I've missed in three years. Even that dog will have its rest. Whether or not my boss thinks it's kosher. Kosher? Kosher with the seat. <laughs> the important thing is to take care of yourself. A lot you care. How do you mean? Well, for one thing, you gave me a room that faces northeast. And? This is exceptionally unhealthy. Everyone knows that a room that faces northeast is subject to unnatural winds and arctic breezes. This could exacerbate my condition, whatever it may be. Oh, for God's sakes. Put the bed opposite the window. You'll be facing southwest. I never thought of that. Here, I'll help you. You and I will be together tonight. It's written in the stars. Wow. I have a plan. I will take Theo out to the boulevard, get him drunk, and return alone. I will convince him to come with me. How? He doesn't seem to like you very much. At the dinner table, I will engage him in a battle of wits, and then lure him into a drinking bout. He cannot win a battle of wits. <laughs> exactly. I will return in a few hours and make you mine. Will you be ready for me? I will. You must take care of Cohen. How? You'll figure out the way. Your participation will heighten your ire. Is what we're doing wrong? It was God who gave me my passion. It is the devil who prevents it from being spent. Let's go with God. You know, I have a friend with the same complaints as you, and he knows his body like an office man. I asked him about his ailments. Uh, what did he say? He seems to think it's nerves, but nerves affect the other organs, the liver, the lungs, the kidneys. For lungs and kidneys? You're making him nervous, Theo. Exactly my point, nerves. Too nervous. Affects the liver, lungs, and kidneys. But he doesn't think he has anything serious. I don't have anything serious. Then it is my duty to point out to you the list of possible serious diseases you may have. <laughs> Gout, emphysema, whooping cough, mouth, eyes, meningitis, shingles, Is there a draft in here? The window is open a bit. Could we close it? I don't know what to say. May I speak? Your rent is paid. <laughs> that is the subject of poetry. See the way a woman's tenderness comforts the sickly disease. He's not comforted. He feels awful. I am comforted. My point. You're only comforted because you're sick. If you were healthy, you would just be annoyed. You're not annoyed when I serve you dinner. That's because it's a function of duty. It is why when I go off to work, you are not annoyed, because I am doing my duty. And when I am at home, it is your duty to serve me dinner. If everyone just did their duty and nothing else, the world would be a better place. Duty. Is that all you think about? What about the softness of the serving hand, the warm cradle of the female caress, frocks with Frills and polka dots. <laughs> you know what, Prasadi? You sound like a woman. Those are not manly thoughts. Men do not think of polka dots. I am a man who lives on the poetic side of life. A man wields an axe. A man hews wood. He pisses against the wall. He shoots <laughs> birds from the air with pellets. He does not put on brocaded cufflings, and stroll off into a garden to write poetry. Many men have. Yes, I've heard of these sensitive men, singing their hearts out on the stage, crooning love songs, weeping over their lady loves. Why would a woman want a man who acts like a woman? Let women go off to write poetry and sing on the stage of their broken hearts. Men. Strong, vital men should be at the office, stamping documents, filing files, and going home at five o'clock. Monotony, continuity, tedium, regularity. 
It's Bart Barrett. How dare you insult barbers? <laughs> enough to motivate me to a higher place. How could I be motivated by a little housewife? Oh. Not just a little housewife. There's no embarrassment. I have descended from a long line of company clerks. You have descended from a long line of little housewives. You could be an artist. Do you think that if I came home and sang to Louise of my tender feelings for the heavens, she would ever respect me? Yes. You just think so. Does the name Nietzsche mean anything to you? One of the giants. You read him? No, I haven't. Do you want to know what he stands for? No, thank you. Mm, I'll lend you my copy. I do not read. You don't read? Never. I work seven hours a day. After that, I am tired. So eat, sleep, work. That's your life. <laughs> Where does it all end? With a pension. And politics doesn't interest you. Doesn't affect me. Science. Oh, um. Theology. The stricter the better. Poetry. I'd rather sit on nails. You disavow the power of poetry? I'll get you a volume. Promise me you'll read it. I'll tell you what. I'll go to the zoo and see the giraffe. <laughs> Why? Because a giraffe is like a poem. They both make no sense. Herr Musk, a man is not all muscle. A man is a brain, a heart, a source of sexual power. Do not use that language in this household. I am referencing Freud. I am referencing me. Herr Musk, a man is only what he contributes to the human race. The heroes are the thinkers, poets, painters, musicians. And the late person is only important to the degree that he knows them. What about being a man? I am a man. But no, you're not. How can you say that? Because I know what a man is. There is an essential act of manhood, and you don't do it. Oh, there is. Yes, there is. And what is the essential act of man? A man. A real man takes care of someone. I take care of someone. Yourself doesn't count. Herr Moss, let me ask you a philosophical question. I enjoy a good philosophical question as much as the next fellow. How would you know that? What? Well, I am the next fellow. How would you know you enjoy them as much as I? <laughs> what is it, Rosario? Can you think of any circumstances where it would be all right to, for a married woman to have an affair? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Why? Because only men can have affairs. And what makes you say that? Isn't it in the New Testament or something? Uh, yes, I think so. It's a book of uh, St. Louis. <laughs> Look, my boss's wife was having an affair. He found out about it and decided to let her. He told everyone he didn't want to infringe on her individual uniqueness. That's where modern thought leads us. The man's a hero. His wife can look up to him. No, his wife despises him. But he let her express herself. She despises him from the bottom of her heart. I can say this. I myself had an affair with a married woman. One night of things, she ran back to her husband. <laughs> <laughs> but it can't be allowed. It destroys the family. But what if there is no family? The point is, only men can handle it. I can't believe that you believe what you believe. I can't change my mind. I have nothing to think. I can change your mind. I can open your heart to the arts. Not so. Might we go out and discuss it over a glass of schnapps? <laughs> yes, we might. With your permission. Oh, yes, Louise. Would you mind if I went to the bar with Versati? Well, I... Ha! I'm kidding! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Versati. Let's kill it.
Oh, I can't wait to see you stumble and fall. You too, Cullen. I'm tired. Suit yourself. Let me begin. It was Descartes who stated that we exist. Someone had to say that. <laughs> I suppose you're hot as a pistol after Versailles' rhapsody. No. I observed something about him tonight. What's that? His passion is triggered by the slightest incident. Like yours. Uh, my impulse was to protect. His was to possess. Oh, please. Where do I get some abuse around here? You doubt me, Versailles hates me, and Theo isn't so incredibly cruel to me. How? He gave me a room facing northeast. But he moved the bed. Too late. I was already subjected to infectious viral winds. <coughs> well, maybe you should go lie down. No, too early. Oh, here. Come take a walk. A long walk. No, the night air would worsen my condition. I don't think you have a condition. Oh, really? Then why, if I have no condition, did my doctor, whom I visited today, after hearing my symptoms, prescribe these? What are they? They're called placebos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! You are so pale. Pale? Oh, uh, let me get you a tonic. What kind of tonic? A pick-me-up. Oh, I better not. Oh, oh, just a little. I never mix medicine. Well, oh, here, it will help just a little bit. No, my doctor advised me against it. Are you sure you are looking ashen? Am I? Oh, yes, let me check your throat. Why? Is it red? Oh, scarlet. Oh, uh, feel my hands. Oh, tennis balls. Touch my forehead. Oh, inferno. Oh, check my time. Rabbit fur. Give me the toilet. Oh, take a big gulp. Oh, my nerves are failing me. Uh, one night facing northeast and I'm falling apart. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, 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 oh I've no feeling in my legs. No feeling. Do you know how painful it is to have no feeling? Oh, I'm suddenly so tired. Guess I'm not just a little housewife after all. What are you doing up so late? Comedy. A play by Sternheim. Very funny. Should I see it? Wait till it's adapted. <laughs> are we alone? We are. So, this afternoon with Versailles. What? I want to drink in your happiness. I want to see the light dancing in your eyes. Tell me everything. Every detail for your guardian. How did it get started? He stood over there. Oh my god! There's still heat here. Where were you? Here. And he came to you? No, he stayed where he was. Oh. And? Talked. Perfect. He seduced you by words alone. He said he was finally and forever in love. Oh, that unlocks the legs. <laughs> what happened? He neared you. Yes. Closer and closer. He makes lightning shoot through you. And in the face of his masculine power, your body is weak. Oh, I lost all my senses. Oh, Louise. And he came to me and talked and spoke. <laughs>
galloped to his room with his balls of blue. <laughs> Magazines for you. Poor 
got to sleep. Either that or a coma. You're up late. You missed breakfast. I was out cold. I fell asleep on my hand. When I woke up, I, I was still on it. It was as though I was drugged. <laughs> Mention my name. God likes me. <laughs> well, you slept well. You must like the room. No, I hate it. So you want to move? No, I want a year's lease. No, but you are bizarre. Versati has a year's lease. As long as Versati is here, I am here. The rents are rising around here. In two months, it's worth 15. 12. We agreed. And where's the sugar? 14 and no sugar. 13 and I want sugar. In advance and no sugar. That's my savings. Going, going. Oh, right to have it done with. Mm, let's sigh. I can't believe that a man who, out of the names Luther and Schiller, could do something like this. All right. For one year, Herr Mosk leases to Herr. Cohen, oops, that's with a K. <laughs> One room, including morning coffee, without sugar. With. <laughs> without. Give me that. I'm going out for some sugar. Leave it in the kitchen where we can all use it. It was just a whim to ask him for more. I'm stunned he did. Let's see. 28 tall all around. Uh, times 12, that's 336 taller a year. I make 600. That's 936. Our expenses are 950, 960. We're almost living for free. Come in! Church. Hey, Versati. They're all out. Oh. What's that? You're hiding something. Oh, Jackie, it's nothing. It's me. Oh. Whoa! You're pretty, Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> if a man says it at that moment, it is true. Anyone wearing these is asking to be taken seriously. They're not mine. They're a gift to Louise. You would look beautiful in these. You think so? Old ships don't hoist silk sails. <laughs> if you had these on, you would be irresistible. Oh, dear boss. Oh, don't think I don't know that you are a sound bottom. <laughs> I think I never like this. You don't know me at all. And I know you never wanted to, but I didn't care. I didn't let you. But today, you came along in that dress. And now with these. I was just going to get them on your wife. You know who's in and out in this building. <laughs> Louise is at church. You must have seen her leave. I'm taking her back. Are you forbidden for from behind? <laughs> I don't think this is so shocking to you. What makes you say that? You haven't left. <laughs> Did Louise know about this? I'll never tell her because it would hurt her. But I've done it before. Not often, but with pleasure. A man is in the end. A man. Only since my voice has changed. <laughs> Desire a just morality. You might not like me. I'm 42. Rivers still flow from rusty pipes. <laughs> That's the most romantic thing anybody. <laughs>
pants off, and when you come in, I'll have a little surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> little. <coughs> no, the devil will get me if I do. Don't want men around. 
I am never fooled. Very well. Any personal contact must be avoided. Your wife, when she's doing her duties, must, before entering, knock three times. She must wear decent clothing, not ripped or revealing. There must be no salacious talk, implications, or otherwise questionable innuendo. Instead of coffee, I'll take tea. Coffee stimulates. When I get excited, I have been known to utter a foul string of obscenities. <laughs> I'd rather avoid that. <laughs> I suffer from constipation, but that's my business. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes it is. I'll try the room for a month. My name's Klingelhoff. I'm a scientist. My things will be delivered here promptly. I'll need a contract. Let me get my paper. Sit there. There. Sugar. Who's that? Klingelhoff. He's a new tenant. He's staying here. Where? In Versati's room. He checked out. What? Versati paid in advance and left. He left? Gone. Why? Some woman he met. What woman? Some woman he met on the street. Woman he met on the street? Versati gone? I have no use here. I cannot protect those who are not under threat. Uh, Herr Mosk! I'm leaving. You're going to? I'll pick up my things later. I'm keeping the sugar, and I want a refund of my rent. A deal's a deal. You said so yourself. I'll call my lawyer. You don't have a lawyer. I'll become one. <laughs> Look, if the room rents, I'll refund. Otherwise, nothing. All right. I'm leaving this house. But may I say, Herr Moss, that not only am I going with a C, but I thoroughly enjoyed, in fact, I relished in the delight of seeing a certain view in the park the other day. And it wasn't of all the king's horses and all the king's men, <laughs> but of something much more wonderful. What? Cohen with the sea? <laughs> I'll return in the morning for my days. Good day, Frau Boss. Louise, take care of him. I have some paperwork to do. Well, who are you? I am one who prefers the formal to the familiar, and therefore would appreciate a less aggressive inquiry. Well, you're in my house, and I would like to know who you are. I am your new tenant. Oh, our flat is fully rented. Not anymore, evidently. Since when? Since today. Your husband has drawn up a contract as we speak. Oh, Theo! You're late! Did you confess at church? Yes. I hope it did you good. The priest made me tell the story over and over. <laughs> After the sixth retelling, I received complete forgiveness. That's a relief. Cohen's gone? And Herr Versani. Checked out. Versani? Did they say why? Cohen was enigmatic and Versani was insane. Something about a woman he met and being swept off his feet. A woman? What woman? Someone he met last night. He said he was never so moved by a woman before. He said he wanted to write poems to her. Oh. Once in place, love never breaks. You're just another man here to rent a room in our house. That is why I'm here. And I see it's a room to get away from it all. A room to do a little work? Exactly. Oh, to pursue with diligence whatever your area of interest, which is in this case, let's see, poetry? A quiet study of the arts? In fact, science. Ah, science. And perhaps you were in the park the other day for the King's Parade? It's one's patriotic duty. Under a linden tree? Linden trees lined the boulevard. And what did you see? Something wonderful! So, it's just a coincidence, is it, that you came here to this place seeking a room next to a famous pair of underpants? How dare you! Oh, please. Now that I've learned to read a man's face, I can see 
that lust is written all over yours. <laughs> Madam, I have no idea what you are talking about. Oh, really? Well, does this ring any bells? Who would who? My chancellor! I swear it, I don't know. But you said you saw something wonderful. The king, I saw the king. Then you really don't know? Let me just say that this is the kind of conversation that I have avoided my entire life. I have not only left rooms, but countries that have tried to engage me in perversity. And I cannot believe that filth of this kind has penetrated into the very heart of the German home. You are behaving like, like an American. <laughs> you are here to rent a room. Pardon me? You are here to rent a room. I was. And you changed your mind? Most undoubtedly. Well, may I ask why? Why? Because a few seconds ago, you lifted your dress over your head. <gasps> I did? What? You lifted your dress over your head. <laughs> oh, I have to ask. Are you subject to delusions? What do you mean? Have you ever misplaced things? On occasion. Have you ever gone to the market and then forgot why you went? Sometimes. Age does that. Age can do that. As well as make someone believe that someone has lifted her dress over her head. You're saying you didn't? Oh, I assure you, it's not my nature. I just came back from church. <laughs> but I forgive you. Well, my dear lady, I apologize. Oh, it's quite all right. I hear it's a symptom of genius. Oh, yes. I'm sure I've heard that. Ah, I think I need to rest. Would you tell your husband that I'll come by tomorrow to sign the contract and that my things will be here at least then? Oh, I will, Herr... Klingelhoff. Herr Klingelhoff. I'm sorry if I offended you. Think nothing of it. Go off and get some rest. Thank <laughs> you. 
back for my things. Oh, I can help. I can't ask you. I can do it. Oh, well, here, Sit. Would you like some coffee? I would. Thank you. I'm sorry your Saudi's gone. How can you say that? I'm sorry for you. I know you liked him. That's the odd thing. I didn't. I understand. You do? We were all caught in a trap of circumstance. How so? This event, this failure of a knot in a string, catapulted us into rare air. We were disconnected from this earth. Rosani motivated by fantasy, myself motivated by jealousy, and your mind clouded by romance. Why did you leave? I suppose my jealousy exhausted itself. I longed to come back to the world. My normal life wasn't so bad. You know, the most peculiar thing about all of this is now I'm back with my husband. Ah. He has reclaimed me. So still, it's strange. But there's something even more strange. My leaving? No, although you have meant something to me. Versace sudden reversal? No, Versace is a man of reversals. There's something else, Maybe. something that leaves me surprisingly empty. May I ask what it is? My fame is gone. Ah. I was so desired. Yes. But over nothing, an accident. I was notorious. Everyone wanted to be near me. But they left as quickly as they came. You have real words, Louise, that our eyes were drawn into the dirt. Helen, she is occupied territory. Good morning, Herr Mosk. I have just come back from my days. And Louise is not one of them. It was just a friendly goodbye. Hold on, Kevin. Let me say one thing to you. I will miss you. Miss me? Yes. You have stirred things up here in an unpleasant way, but it was still lively, and I like you for it. Which proves a point. But what's that? The individual is not indicative of the group. Mm. In your case, Herr Moss, the individual is indicative of the group. <laughs> Excuse me. I've come to sign my papers. Ah, yes, Cohen. This is Herr Klingelop. He's your replacement. He won't be dancing any jigs around here, but he is an interesting fellow. I'd rather be dead than interesting. <laughs> I have a surprise for you. <laughs> How splendid! Do you like them? Oh, they're lovely. I can feel movement down below. How can you stay so calm, Klingelhoff? Because I know this is not happening. Herr Klingelhoff, <laughs> don't you just love Gertrude's German flag? It's beautiful, and I salute it. Somebody's coming. Oh, perhaps for Saudi to ask for his rent money. No, no, the place are too heavy to be for Saudi. Well, we're not expecting anyone. The parade signs out of the window. Oh, my lord, it's the king. I told you this was going to happen. Your Lordship. <laughs> Please, rise. Is this the home of Theomas? Yes, Your Highness, and I assure you that what happened the other day... I've heard of your work, Hermas. How thorough you are, your attention to detail. You are a blessing to the German people and an asset to the king. Ah. <laughs> Once every several years, I like to visit my administrators and reward them personally. Hermas, I am pleased to inform you that I am promoting you to assistant overclerk in the king's office. Your Highness, to know the word of my dedication has reached your ears is reward enough. Hermas, I shake your hand. If more of our citizens were like you, our society would tick like a German clock. Uh, thank you, Your Highness. Herr Mask, it is I who salute you, a servant to the German state. Goodbye. Oh, and uh, one other thing. I was wondering if you had a room for rent. <laughs> <laughs>
looking for something small where I can get a little work done. Nothing much, just some place where I can get away and perhaps write some poetry. <laughs> Your Majesty, I'm sure that can be arranged. Good! I'll have my men deliver some broader goods tonight! <laughs> I'm checking back in. Where are you going? I think you're better from upstairs. <laughs> there are no rooms left. You'll share a room with the king? Woo! Woo! Thundering pussy ass fools! <laughs> King's room. I said, Louise, go and get the king's room ready. In my own good time. 